We are back. Giants baseball, past, present, and future. I'm Ralph Tycho. The host is Tim Holler. Now, never pronounced it that way before, but I saw on your Facebook, Tim, that that's how you like to pronounce it. Holler, not Haller. Am I correct? No, actually, if you, if you press that little, that little speaker, It'll pronounce the name Haller, and it, 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 it looks like Holler in the in the way that it's broken down. But if you press that little speaker, I prefer the last name to be pronounced Haller. I really don't really even care what you call me as long as you don't call me late for dinner, you know. So or just call you or just call. And you. I've been called I've been called really bad stuff over the years, so you know it's okay. Who of us hasn't, <laughs> on one level or another, one time or another, and uh, boy, the thoughts of all the bad names that I've been called just ran yeah. in my head at one time and almost knocked me on my butt. <laughs> I've had, and not just the thoughts, the looks that could kill, too. Boy. Uh, oh, yeah. Was, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, it doesn't really matter what we do. It, it's we have to be thick-skinned. I, I really believe that. We we live in a very sensitive culture, and people get a little bit hurt and bent out of shape. When I'm learning to realize that, I've got to realize who's throwing it at me, and realize that they have their their flaws and defects, of character as well. So I, I can't take it too personally. You know. Well, you know, this brings us to what I wanted to talk to uh, Vasu. Our guest, Vasu, how, pronounce it for me the best way you can, Vasu, please, I, because uh, I'm going to screw it up every time. That's all right. I'll see about a party. Just like it looks. Just about a party. Okay. Holler. I, 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 <laughs> Dick Kaczynski. Dick Kaczynski. Um, <laughs> they can throw it at us. The world can. <laughs> But when you start throwing it at our at our mothers, um, yeah. that's who you had a horrible week this week. Yeah. Well, yesterday it happened. Yesterday I was I'm in LA. I'm actually closer to Tim than I am to uh, to the Bay Area right now. I was in I was in LA last time. I and I found out through uh, through my mom that the, the house was broken into. Thank God she wasn't there. Thank God she wasn't there for you know for right. the worst to happen. But they didn't steal anything. They didn't take anything. Just ransacked it, and three doors were three doors were were came out of their came out of their frames, and it was just horrible from what I from what I heard. I haven't seen it yet. I'm coming back. I'm coming back home tomorrow. I worked the uh, Dodgers Red Sox game today, and I just got back to the hotel for a second before I head out. But uh, with our crew, but I've been you know on the phone with my mom, making sure she's all right and all this other stuff, and, and it's just it's, it's a horrible yeah. situation. I know it happens, but you know what, Ralph, Tim, it's uh, yeah. It's, you never realize it until it actually hits home. And uh, it's totally oh, absolutely! Now, uh, do you think that this was racially motivated, Vasu, or what do you no, think? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I mean, if it was racially motivated, they, they, there would have been signs, or there would have been something there, or anything. Like, I, I don't think that was it at all. We've been we've had this house for forty years. Nothing's ever happened in this house. This is an old family house that I've taken over, that I've taken over, and uh, um, you know, my mom visits me all the time. She lives about ten minutes. In the other house that we that we that I spent most of my life in, but the the house in this part of San Jose, it was just uh, I guess it was just one of those things, and maybe we didn't maybe we didn't update our circumstances with cameras in there, or we didn't put uh, you know whatever it is in this day and age that uh, that you need <coughs> excuse me that that you need to do in terms of in terms of protecting yourself because it is a different day and age, and, and at least in San Jose when I was a kid. Even the South Park, I'm not talking downtown, we're not talking east side, we're not talking any of the stuff as far as San Jose. But um, in the area that I lived in and grew up, I was, I was, nothing ever, ever would ever happen. And things have changed, times have changed, and kids are kids. are kids. Are kids. I, they, like yeah. I said, you know, my mom had some jewelry there. They didn't, never touched that. I had a computer there. They didn't touch that. I got a 50-inch TV. They didn't touch that. Nothing was touched other than the house being ransacked and closed and all that. I'm just glad that wow. I'm just glad that none of us were there. It was it was horrible when I heard about and, it. And yeah, your mom wasn't there. I, I'll yeah. share with you. Yeah, really quickly, my mom a year after uh almost a year after my dad passed away and on, on Halloween, October thirty first of oh five, 
this guy came to the door down here in Indian Wells, and uh, he was dressed in one of those scream mask outfits. And my mom opened the door thinking it was a trick-or-treater, and he beat the living hell out of her and uh, uh, stole some things. He he was working for a painting subcontractor, and um, so he had cased that place already. They eventually caught him, uh, thank God, but my mom was really traumatized by it and physically injured badly by it. And so... It's good news in that your mom or nobody else um, was around or, were, you know, had to encounter anything like that. But it's yeah. still so upsetting because it's yeah, go the I, core I, of you what you're about. And, and you know what, Tim? Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you know what, Tim? I have not uh, – I haven't been home yet to see what the damage is. So I'm actually yeah. – I'm actually – I'm glad everybody's okay and all that. But I guess the first time you see something like that, when, when you're going to walk in, it's going to be like, Oh, you've been violated, man. Somebody has violated you, and, and it, for yeah. for no reason at all. And you and right. you really start to wonder and scratch your head as to what is going on in our world, in our society. And, and I feel badly for you and your family, but you know what? It will bring you closer together in the in the end run. It'll be bring you closer together. You'll you'll make some other precautionary measures as well. But thank God, nobody got hurt. Yeah, I hope so. How is your I really hope doing, so. Tim? How is your mother? Has she? Uh, my doctor, she's doing? all right. She's she's shaking. I mean, she doesn't live at the house, but she was, but she she has a room at the house that she takes that she takes care of it. But you know, she's got some stuff. The other the one bedroom has all all the extra stuff that she doesn't have at her other house, which is only ten minutes away. But they had that. They, ironically, they had a, uh, or coincidentally, they had a uh, housewarming party for friends of our, friends of my mom's. That, live down the street for a brand new house and everything. So they're celebrating a brand new house and people live in there and then all of a sudden something like this happens in the house and, and so it kinda, you know, makes makes uh, makes people think in, in terms of that. And anyway, those people think what kind of neighborhood did I did I come into? It's a great neighborhood. No, no, it's a great neighborhood. Yeah. I grew up in that no, but, I mean, South San Jose. Yeah. South San Jose is a, it's a great neighborhood, but things have changed and, and all the problems started just moving further south from Downtown and the east side and all this other stuff and there's all sorts of there's just all sorts of things going on. You just never know. I mean, you just never know. I know you don't. It doesn't yeah. matter where you live. Uh, the you element know, there's always going to be an element. Yeah, yeah. and it's sad and, and it's unfortunate. Yeah, exactly. Well, and then yeah. people well, also target people also target people also target more affluent areas too. I mean, we're not affluent affluent from that standpoint, but definitely the better areas get targeted because people are always out there. Sure. No question, yeah. but they they indeed have all the poli- more police protection. Uh, well, I'm not so sure about that. I'm not so sure. About I'm not that. either. I, I'm not so sure about it as well. I I just think, you know, at any given time, it doesn't really matter. We can be victims, and 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 it can be yeah, it can be out and open in a public shopping area, or it can be in your home. Uh, it can be walking your dog down in the neighborhood. Anything can happen at any time. And that's the culture that we live in now, and it's right. a, it's a sad, unfortunate thing because right. we used to leave our doors unlocked. You know, I mean, growing up in in the Sam and Tail Park area of, in Sam and Tail, we'd leave our doors unlocked. You know, we didn't think twice about it. There wasn't nobody running from house to house, breaking in and taking right. exactly things. Um, we just didn't. We never even thought about it. And then, of course, when our parents grew up, it was even safer. You know, I mean, uh, you know, but. It's 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 just really a commentary of where we are today as a society. I'm going to be in your old area tomorrow. I'm going to be in San Mateo tomorrow. I'm spend, spending part of the day up there in San Mateo. I'll I'm warn them. Love the area. I'm looking for towns up there. Yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> are it's you? Great area. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. It's very expensive. I don't like that fact. The dirt is really expensive up there. <laughs> You're an idiot. I, I do not. Uh, uh, are you me I know, but yeah, we. Well, <laughs> the reality of it is, the the sand here is cheaper than the dirt in San Mateo. I I know that. You know, I, know that the, from, I know that from my the, business space. I believe me, I know that. You know, it, you know, anybody. But this is a secondary or tertiary home place. It, it's not like are you going to throw, you know, six or eight million dollars to buy a new house uh, down here? Right. If you do, you're, you're going to own part of the mountain as well. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think. I think uh, you know anywhere really in the Bay Area now. We just know how grotesque everything uh, around the whole Bay Area, East Bay, North Bay. You know, South, it doesn't matter. The real estate is, is, is really out of whack. And, you know, and that's, it's always been a very... 
the rental property is so out of whack that oh, no it one is. else is moving out. Oh, that's because people are coming here because this is where technology is. This is Silicon Valley. There's no – Yeah, there's no, and there, there's, there's a lot of flow. Out. There's a lot of cash flow because of the high-tech yeah. industry. And, yeah. you know, now we're getting a lot of people that are coming from all different parts of the United States and the world mm-hmm. to live and work in that area where in the 60s and the 70s, you know, I always equated the Bay Area as being very blue-collar. I mean, you had the people that worked at the airport, the transportation stuff. Um, you know, there was a lot of manufacturing up. It was it was a blue-collar area. It really was. Uh, sure. The docks, the, the just get, get seaport, um, tremendous amount of work there, and that's all going oh, yeah. away. A lot of that yeah. is automated. So yeah. they're taking... Um, they're taking the world and turning it upside down. Yeah. They are. Okay, so let's, let's talk right, a little yeah, baseball real quick. Let's talk baseball. Yeah, let's get off that. I've already, I've already thought that about that. Gotta, that, already, that. That's who's got to go, and I'm going to I'm gonna grill him. I just don't, don't want to keep reliving it. I, I'd just rather. I, I hear you. Here, 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 the question of the that. night, and we, we kind of entertained each other during the course of the week after Duffy's trade. In your – in your – in your best voice, tell me yep. why do you think that trading Duffy for more, well, they're being, they being the main um, parts of the deal, why is that an advantage for the Giants? Why do you like that deal? Well, I like the deal from Matt Moore's standpoint that Matt Moore is another left-hander in that rotation. They're right-handed heavy. They need another left-hander in that rotation. He's under control for two and a half more years through, I think, two Option year in 2019. He's young. He's had good stuff. He had the Tommy John surgery, but if you guys remember when he came up, if you guys remember when he came up with uh, with Tampa, he was a rookie that beat Texas in, in, a, in a road playoff game, and it, yeah. he was just he had he just had great stuff. Yeah, his control is right. a little off. I think his shoulder may not be 1,000 percent yet, but he only gave up two runs. He only gave up two runs. He may have walked six guys, but he made the pitches. It had to be made, and and things went well, and they won the game. And you know what? The win loss record for a pitcher individually is not the way it is anymore. You guys know that because they don't last as long. It's it's what the team record is. And uh, he's one to know as a Giant, as a, as a team member. He may not have gotten the win himself, but they're one to know as a Giant. They won the game. Between, they won the game. And between Duffy, yeah, and between Duffy and Panic, I think I believe I have not talked to anybody in general about this, but yeah, because I haven't seen them yet. They're on the road. But uh, I believe that the difference between the difference between Panic and Duffy is that Nunez, first of all, Nunez cannot can't play the right side as well as he can play the left side. I know he's made some errors and he's not that great of a fielder, but his bat's very good. Now he's going to play third base pretty much regularly, and, he, and he'll get better. And he'll get better. But the whole point of it is who's developed faster, Panic or Duffy? And I and I think most people would believe that Duffy has, has developed faster, and he's a left-handed bat, and he can turn the double play, and he can do all the things that you need from a second baseman, especially that hits in the middle of the order. Matt Duffy had this big injury, and part of the reasoning was, I'm sure they were thinking about it. You, you probably know the front office a little bit better than I do, but I believe that I believe that they were not sure how healthy Duffy is going to be going forward. Well, I mean, you see, that's, that's the one thing I don't I – don't, I agree with everything you said up to the point of injury. And the reason I say that is the Giants or any other organization will not knowingly trade a guy – Thinking that they are not a hundred percent physical, but you don't think that's part of. But you don't think that's part of the thought process. I mean, who, you don't want to give. I don't. Up, I don't, don't want to give up. No, I don't. I don't. don't I don't think. I really don't. I don't no, I think. That. No, no, I believe that. Process. I believe that. But what's your best? <clears throat> clearly, he's clearly he's valuable because otherwise Tampa Bay would not have asked for him. Absolutely. So give up Duffy or Panic, and I I believe that Panic Panic is a keeper. Duffy, uh, Duffy is one of those guys, and you know he's having a tough second year. He was having a tough second year, and who knows if this is just a quarter? Well, well he was hitting two fifty, yeah, and he, and he, right. I mean, who knows? if It was a sophomore slump, and he's going to have a great. I mean, what great Panic career. hitting two forty, and I wouldn't replace Joe Panic. I wouldn't trade him either. I, right. I just think um, when I look at a deal like that, I try to look at the bigger picture. Um, and and that being said, okay, yeah, we need a left-handed starter out of that out of that staff. We do. <laughs> but but are we going for it just for this year? Because the substantial reality of all of this is 
the Giants are who they are because of the core uh, position players that they right. have, and then they've gone out to get good pitching. They've had to buy good pitching. And I'm thinking of, you know, three, four, five years down the line when Duffy really gets more acclimated, he gets healthier. That infield uh, is one of the things that I guess endeared me a lot to the way they were doing things. Those guys are all homegrown. You've got Posey right. behind the dish. And I just, I just, I, I just didn't know if, and, and, and also because Moore's well, they made health a great is trade. in they question. They made a great trade for Nunez, didn't they? I mean, they did. They didn't really. They didn't really. What they they gave up a, a first round pick, a minor leaguer, and a minor, minor leaguer. leaguer. Yeah. Exactly. And and Nunez is a twenty eight or twenty nine year old proven major league ball player who was an all star this year. But they didn't give anybody up from their, you know, their twenty five man roster or their 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 guys to get that. And um, you know, and and the Giants. Bochi especially has been so good with the ability, his ability to plug in guys into different spots. Um, and you get a guy think, like, and you get a guy like Matt Moore, and you get a guy like Matt Moore. This is for the future too. They're, he's going to be here for three well, more years. He's only twenty seven. Well, I know, but I just, I would like, I'd like to see. You know, um, I think that he'll adjust. He'll, he'll stay. He'll get stable. He'll, he'll do all right at, at, in our rotation. I think success. In any area of the game, it rubs off on the guys that you play with. So, I think right. that we um, like you know continuity. I think we'd like well, to we do. a solid lineup in there for years. Sure, everybody everybody's happy exactly. with everybody's yeah. happy with continuity because they've won. But they're, they're going for winning here. I, I was on Twitter oh, they today. Absolutely with, are. Yeah, I was on Twitter today Why with somebody, a friend of mine from Palo Alto, and we were and we were Why chatting do about. Do you have concerns about Panic's health, about his concussions? Yeah, it's like an ankle injury. It's like an ankle injury. Once you sprain your ankle, you're more susceptible to it as time goes on. So we'll see how it we'll see how <laughs> Yeah, it and I, you know, I don't know how many concussions I got over the years. I didn't even even pay attention to it. You know, that, probably in that, a fog right now. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, here's the thing. We, we so overly exaggerate a lot of these injuries today. Guys that play today, of course, they're pampered because of the money they're getting. And the money that they've, um, you know, they they rightfully now earn, right. but but right. you know there there are things that happen, and they'll put a guy on a 14 day DL. Uh, yeah, but don't you think it's, times it's a lot more safer in all in all sports? Forget baseball in all sports. I think it's I think it's a lot well, more safer now. You know, I, it is it is or at least they're taking, I, it, at least they're taking care of people better than they did in the 70s. Well, they absolutely do, and I think that's good. I think that is good. I especially like, I know all sports where you just mentioned that, but football especially. I haven't heard a lot about the boxing industry and what they're doing with the, their, their, their issues. Well, we've seen enough of head injuries and stuff. Industry. Exactly. But I don't really know what they're doing about it. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. We, we played, we played the game until we couldn't play anymore. In my case, I can't see out right. of my left eye. Um, you know, my dad couldn't get up and down, uh, from a crouch anymore. Um, you know, and that's just, those are the choices we make, um, when we, sure. we, we, we do, you know, when we want to play a game, we, we realize that there are risks and at any given minute that can be over any given second, it can be over. Um, you know, I think what tomorrow, a Rod's going to go ahead and announce his retirement to Cheryl did it today or yesterday. Um, and I just, you know, just come across the ticker that they're going to have a press conference with Brian Cassidy yeah. and Alex Rodriguez tomorrow at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Yeah, a Rod, a Rod's gonna pull the plug too, you know. So and well, they're gonna release him. You know, either he's gonna retire or they're gonna release him, or he's gonna just retire and step away tomorrow. I don't think he's gonna leave money on the table. No, retire. nobody would leave money on the table. I don't blame anybody for leaving money on the table. Well, could die. Well, he, he what he leaves on the table is really insignificant to what he's earned over uh, his career. Oh yeah, I know, I know where you're going with that. I know where you're going with Mike Retire, Ralph. But I'm talking about like during the middle of the year. That can leave money. Yeah. At the end. So they might just pull him off the roster. He's no longer going to play for him, and, and he's accepting of that at this point. Uh, yeah. And you know. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, he's hitting what two ten, two fifteen, something like that. He's yeah. he's definitely just a, a shadow of who he once was. Is he um, seven hundred? I haven't I haven't followed him. Is he at seven hundred? No. He's he's at six something. Like three, he's not six ninety seven, right? Or I think like he's four ninety something. I think he's four home runs away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, I mean, you know, something big is going to happen tomorrow. They're pro- they call the press conference. So something's going to happen with Alex Rodriguez tomorrow. What we what it is, we don't know yet. 8 o'clock, but, um, 8 o'clock West Coast likely, time, we'll find out. More than likely being released, which really leads me to give some kudos to the Yankees, who um, they got an awful lot of prospects for Miller. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I like I Frank. Really about Mark Teixeira, though. I really was shocked about Mark Teixeira, though. I, I, he's 36 years old, and I thought he had some game left, unless the injuries just got to him too much. Yeah, he's, 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 he's been dinged up so much over the last yeah. year. He's a gold seven years a baseman and a switch hitter. I didn't, you know, he's one of five five switch hitters with 400 plus home yeah. runs. But I, yeah. I was a little yeah. shocked. One of those ball on the old type players who just plays yeah. balls to the wall all the time. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. He'll be missed. Yeah. Absolutely. He will be. Uh, yeah, but you know what? I like the Yankees uh, and their situation right now. They've got all these young prospects. Yeah. Um, you know, they've – yeah, and Di Gregorio yeah. could be the, as good a shortstop as you'll see. Right. Exactly. Well, and, absolutely. and Brian, Brian are we McGann are we is talking, the, Are we talking overall or are we just talking that? Defensively, defensively or offensively? What stop is there is in baseball right now? Defense. No, Ralph. No, 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 no. no Brandon no, Crawford, and Anderson Simmons are the two best shortstop in baseball. Okay, he's close. <laughs> he's no, no, he's, he's a major league. Right year. I'll tell you what. Give me he's a major league short. Give me three years. Give me three years. Give three years in a row with him. Then, then we can talk. But not, not, not yeah. one yeah. half. Well, one. he's a major. But he's a major league shortstop. I remember sure. in my days of growing up at Candlestick, there was a guy named Johnny Lamaster who people yeah. just despised. I love Johnny Lamaster. That guy was phenomenal. He was a great, great shortstop. He didn't hit very well, but he was he, good defense. No, he didn't. He had great range. He didn't hit a lot, and he, for some reason, they didn't. And he was so good-natured about it. They'd boo him, mm-hmm. and he came out once with a warm-up jacket. With that jersey, yeah. 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 <laughs> it was he actually good. had it on the back of his uniform. Yeah. Was boo. Nice. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, so that's it takes a lot of courage to do that. Yes, you know. Absolutely. So, what's uh, our consensus on this trade? Then, do we like the trade for Matt Moore? Do well, you know what I have to do now because it's real? <laughs> is I become a Matt Moore <laughs> fan and I put I put Matt Duffy as, a, as he's there, he's going to be there every day uh, shortstop in Tampa. I mean, New and Jersey he, number forty five Moore. Does yeah. he have enough range to play shortstop, too? Who are we talking well, about? Well, he was playing shortstop. Duffy was playing shortstop um, when he was in double-A yeah. when he first got called up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a very capable defensive. You know, he doesn't he have comes back of, healthy. Uh, if he comes back healthy, don't be surprised, because I used to live in St. Petersburg and I have friends with the Rays. Don't be surprised if he, if he comes back healthy and they feel like he's healthy, that uh, number three there in Tampa, Mr. Longoria, might be yes. Well, either that or it might come – because they're old teammates, too. They played at Long Beach State together. So they're friends, and they and Longoria was in great favor for them to get Duffy. So, you know, it could end up being a really good deal for them, too. Um, what do I think about this deal? Hey, it's a deal. It's done. And now Matt Moore has to go out and perform every fifth, fourth or fifth day. He's blown up. I'll tell you yeah, what, was, like, Matt Cain yeah, like, threw the ball great tonight. Great. Matt oh, Cain yeah, was fantastic. He looked unbelievable tonight. Nice horse. Nice yeah. day for yeah, the horse. He looked unbelievable. I was, on a, I was on with a friend of mine from Palo Alto. We were saying the notes back and forth. She, was, she called me on my mom, and then, and, then, uh, and then we were talking back and forth. She's like, she's like, oh, I can't believe they put PV in the bullpen. They should, they should put some margin in the bullpen. I'm going, Kelly, Kelly, let's be realistic here. He's only been here yeah. for half a year. Of a three year contract. Yeah. Don't get crazy just because Yeah. Just because he's having a bad yeah. trip. Everybody goes through bad this is a major league base. Sure they do. Everybody goes through bad trip. You know and I'll take I Justin Marger as my three starter every day. I'll take a Justin Marger as a three starter. I still love league. Justin Marger. I still love Justin Marger. And Jake Peavy, they're gonna put him in the bullpen because, you know, this might be his last this might be a swan fun. He might he might end up he might end up retiring after this year. I I don't think they're gonna bring him back next year. He's going to take a ring home with them too, because the Giants are going to win it all. (laughs) Hey, come on now! Hey, I'm going to get carried away. If you're going to get carried away about Matt Moore, I'm going to get carried away about the Giants winning the World Series. Trades, 
And then I want Come on, to we're impartial. Come on, we're impartial journalists here. You've got to give me a scouting report on the Dodgers after I tell you that if a trade is to be made, the odds are that the, that the team getting the position player, as opposed to all things being equal, mm -hmm. as opposed to the pitcher, is odds are really um, because pitching being the way it is, that yeah. uh, the position player is going to give you what's on his baseball card. Yeah. Well, you don't know what on the back of his baseball card. Well, you don't know what, what the pitcher's going to give you. Right. And I think um, it wasn't a deal made from strength well, with the Giants. I'll give you this as a Dodgers fan. I'll give you this as a Dodgers fan growing up in L.A. The Dodgers are not very good. This is, it's this division. The division's not very good. There's two teams in the division. They have no Kershaw. Their starting pitching is not very good. And even though they got Josh Reddick, their offense has been good the last three weeks. I watched them the last few nights. They cannot hit. They, they, they lost 9 nothing last night. They won today only because only because the, the, they, had, they had no other option to win today. But their offense is good enough. But this division is not the strongest division in baseball. And they are not I would be shocked. I mean, I didn't realize this until I, I saw the game notes this morning. The Dodgers have had as many – Injuries as the Giants had. They put 26 people on the disabled list this year. And I know everybody knows about the Giants injuries, especially in the Bay Area. But uh, since we're worldwide, I figure we'll talk about other teams. But uh, 26, 26 injuries. Have, they get healthy. A, do you have an opinion on Pug? Well, yeah, they're, 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 they tried to trade him, but nobody wanted him. I don't know if it's attitude or whatever the case was. But uh, Yeah, he's yeah. a cancer. He, he is. He's not you good know, for He's a, got great talent. You know, he just stopped working. He just stopped working hard. Whatever he did to get there, he just he just stopped doing it, and and uh, and therefore, this is the way it is. I mean, I I, I like him. I I think he's a great talent. But if you're not going to work for what in, in any in any line of work, you're not going to work for what you got. So what's the point? Give up on him. He's from Cuba. So That's why nobody's giving up on him, Ralph. Though they just want to see what his attitude is. But what would you suggest they do? You suggest they have well, they got to trade him. They're trying to get somebody to. Take him uh, in a deal, or I think the Marlins off really want to do something. I think he wants to go back to Miami, where he's from. And be in South Don Florida. There. Don Manley's there, yeah. and uh, they've got a few. Things. I think Miami is probably be the best spot for him if he's going to realize the power. Right. Okay. And I think that if he okay. can get out of the way of himself, he will be a good baseball yeah, well, player. He will be a very good but, player. But okay. I think he I expected that, when he got to the learned. major leagues. Yeah. I agree, but here's the thing I learned is. He's still 23 or 24 years old. I mean, what 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 did we do right at 23 and 24 years old in our in our life? Well, that's well, true, Jimmy, but Jimmy, we, but I know that there are guys that are 23 and 24 year old that are very mature. Look at Seager. Are they? I mean, the Seager, are they? Same age. Are they a few and far between, or is, are they the majority? I, I would say they're few and far. I think between. the majority of of guys that uh, are 23 and 24 years old. We're not talking about them. We're talking about one guy, and that's Yasuo. Right. You're right. No, you're right. There you're are right. a lot of 23 and 24 year old players that don't draw the attention that he gets. One, because probably they don't have the talent or the ability. To right. Play. Yeah. That's my point. But also, point. they aren't as as volatile as a personality as he has. So there's a, he's got a double edged sword here. Here's a guy that is a great ball player. But he what? can't corral his emotional makeup. I mean, I, I think I look at Yasiel Puig and I think of a guy that played for Cleveland back in the late seventies, Joe Charbonneau. The guy was an Joe incredible Charbonneau from Dallas, Dallas, California. Right, and Joe had an affinity to want to party and get out and get get it with the, right. everybody after the enough. game, and that completely pulverized him. I mean, it just did you know him, his Tim? career. Did you know him? I, I, I met Joe. I had met Joe, but I didn't. I don't know him. He was an acquaintance. Okay, oh, but, I've um, never met. I just heard all sorts of stories. I'm afraid to say that if Yasiel Puig doesn't sort of have some kind of a psychic turn, he's not going to yeah. ever be what we wanted him to, to be, you yeah, know, yeah. or what we expected him to be. Um, and I look at guys that are his age, 23, 24, 25 in the major leagues, mm -hmm. that are doing a good job. And they're not drawing the attention that he gets because of his attitude or 
I'll take Corey Seager ten through. times over on that, on that roster itself. I'll take Corey Seager ten times over. Absolutely. That's even right Jock now. Peterson, even Jock Peterson, he's working hard enough to want to he be like a better hitter in the major leagues. He works and hard. He's going to be a good ball player. He's a very good center fielder, and he, he can develop some consistency be, at the plate. Good. If he yep. can develop some consistency at the plate, he's going to be a twenty, twenty-five year yep. home run guy. Hit two sixty, steal thirty yep. bases a year. And Clay Thompson's, uh, Clay Thompson's out of a, younger brother, Trey. Clay Thompson's younger brother, yeah. Trey. He works hard. Great ball play. He came from a, exactly. Yeah, he's going to be very good. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, these guys are the same age bracket. Yeah. Uh, probably the same talent ability and from just a statistics standpoint. Well, do you think it's up? Yeah. Well, do you think it's upbringing? Do you think it's upbringing too? Maybe you didn't have the same kind of upbringing that Trey Thompson did with That's the very possible. I mean, I, can, I couldn't tell you the way – you know, a Cuban right. kid but grows look, up. Look, I'm sure it's look, very. that in mind for a 23, 24 year old kid who may not have had, who may not have had, uh, you know, the same opportunities to come in a foreign yeah, country and learn. Yasiel Puig made it for six weeks. A million dollars into his hands too. This guy's got an, an right. Amount right. What would we do if we had if somebody had enough fifteen million dollars at age twenty three? What what would we do? Uh, well, I would have well, gotten drunk. All right, this is public consumption here. Maybe we don't need to. Maybe we don't need to spell it up live radio. I would have bought Jack Daniels. <laughs> what they asked Tug McGraw, what did he say? He says that I'm going to spend uh, most of it. I'm going to spend it all on wine yeah. and women, and if right. there's anything left over, I'll spend it on okay. consequential so, stuff. So, so it's cultural, and he's not. He's not totally at fault. It's, I just don't think that they. No, he I is. Don't think that they. Is. I'm talking about right. Jessica Puig. I mean, a lot of it's not his yeah, fault. He, he, he's he, going through a cultural he, change, going through all sorts of stuff. Now you hand this guy yeah. who defected. He's got all his money, and and he's the talk of the town for six weeks. And and and. Yeah. It, but you know what? There are other guys that handle it that come from Cuba or Venezuela or Puerto Rico or the Dominican, yeah. and there are guys that are his age that actually. Holy. Do a good job and, of handling and, all of that stuff. No, you're right, Tim. And, and but here's the point. Here's the point. I'm glad you brought that up because I do know that I do know that the Dominican Republic and all these places they have academies. The people in Cuba do not have these academies or the rearing of the training that go with what they do. Like the Royals have their Dominican Republic uh, academy down there, and the, I know the Dodgers are down there, and I know a bunch of teams now. They're scouting the Dominican Republic and, uh, and everything. Like that, but in Cuba, it's not that way. It's not that way. No, it isn't. They grow up. And they don't have that I mean, tutelage. Right. right. You're right because but they don't right. have that. But you're tutelage. right. A lot of guys handle. But you're right. You're right. A lot of guys handle them. I'll, I'll say this: for every Yasiel Puig, there is a Jose Fernandez who's the same age. And right, and there and there's a Josh right. Hamilton. There's a Josh Hamilton too. I mean, look at Josh Hamilton. Yeah. What an incredible every talent! Country. Right. Comes from the United any States. Country. You're going to have good and bad. Exactly. And one other exactly. thing about coming from Cuba, he he might have his family back there and not be able to see them at all. And how yeah. is that going to affect it? Yeah, we don't know what that scenario is like. I know that there was a lot of, um, you know, journalistic stuff regarding uh, Puig's sure. uh, exit from Cuba, too, and the monies that he owed yeah. cartel people are, and all of that pressure as well and threats of probably against his life and his family. Um, who knows? Yeah. You know, who really knows what he's had to endure just to try to establish himself to play a game of baseball. Exactly. And uh, we don't know what kind of guidance he was getting back there, and if it's better than what he's sure. getting here. And we don't know how his manager is communicating with him. And right. there's all kinds of things. Um, what do you think? Not bad. But I'll bet Don Manningly would love to have a second shot with Yasiel Puig in Miami. In his hometown and, and being there and everything like that, I, I bet I bet he would love to have another uh, 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 center fielder or right fielder to go with John Carlos Stanton over there. And I would think that they're and they're already playing well to begin with. And, and who knows, they may be the second wild card. So we'll see how that goes. You know, but uh, you might you it might not be out of the realm of possibility that the Yankees end up getting him. There's an mm-hmm. incredibly high Cuban population. Sure. Do you fuck? And, um, like, you know, some guys do well in New York. Some guys well, don't. So he could Chapman do loved it. Chapman loved it being there, right? Right. Absolutely. 
So the book is still out on on him, and um, I'm, I really, before we we end it, I want to say nice things about Matt Cain. I mean, I love Matt Cain. Matt Cain's a great guy. This guy took a lot of heat from Giant fans when he when he had a sore arm and he mm-hmm. seemed to be fading. And for him to be making a comeback now is really nice. He was underappreciated. He was the horse for a long time. Totally, as we say right now, he just they just beat Stephen Strasburg fifteen Strasburg fifteen and one now fifteen and two because Matt came Matt came out pitched and today they won seven to one. Absolutely. Tape on Saturday and, night and the night. Giants and the Giants bats woke up a little bit and they were ignited by Nunez. So sure. you know that what a great ball game. What a great ball game. Look good. Okay, Look so good on TV when I was watching. Take back all the thing, the bad things you said about Bobby Evans on <laughs> Facebook. Tim. No, I will never do that. I will never, I will never counter and, and take those things back. Really, even we'll if, if they were World Series, you're not going to take them back. No, I mean, I, I really, I, I, I have, you know what? Yes, God bless will. Bobby yes, Evans. You will. God bless Bobby Evans. No, no, I mean, let me, let me say this. Let me say this. God bless Bobby Evans. Right. He's a smart young guy who learned right. from probably one of the better general managers of our era, and Brian Sabian. Uh, but Bobby didn't have any – he got that job because he was friends with Larry Bear, and he went to Cal, and he's a smart young man, and he's and very intelligent when it comes to money and those things. And he learned how to evaluate and, and learn the inner workings of baseball because of the people that were around him. And, and in an opportunistic way, he took an oppor- he, he took full advantage of that, worked very hard to do what he's been able to do. But if I asked Bobby Evans to play catch with me, he would embarrass himself. <laughs> right. And see, I have that. That's that's kind of like my cutoff line. I mean, he might embarrass himself all the way to a world championship. So. Well, you know what? If you know what? If he does it, he's won three already. He's been a part of three already. That's true. I'm jealous. I want his job. That's why I'm. Well, there you go. Being, that, that's why I'm, you know, I'm a very I heard competitive you have some person. Giant connection. I heard, I heard you have some giant connections. Maybe you should. Oh, uh, uh, you never you know. Should, uh, apply. Maybe I know. I know a couple apply. people. I know a couple <laughs> people. But you know that that doesn't mean a whole lot either. I, you right. know, I've been out of the game for such a long time, and the game right. has changed. And um, you know, I have a I have a reputation of being a little bit of a hothead. You know, and I have a little bit of a. a the reputation of being very opinionated. Um, I'm not very flexible. I can be difficult sometimes to work with. Um, I get that. You know, I really do. Um, but, you know, for what it's worth, I have a great passion for baseball and especially the Giants. We all do. And it's, we all do. We wouldn't it's be doing genetic, this. It's genetic with me, too. Um, you know, my bloodline and, and my, um, you know, my pedigree is, is it's just one of those things. Is, am I ever going to be uh, work for the Giants? No. Are they ever going to offer me an opportunity? Probably not. I doubt it. If I do anything, it may be fantasy camp with Bill Klasky and and do a couple of things like when um, one of their one of our own passes away, they'll ask me to come up and be a part of that, which is more than I can even ever ask for. Um, those guys are they know what they're doing. They don't need my assistance. Um, Bobby Evans knows what he knows what he's doing, and I'll tell you this: Bobby Evans had a great difficulty in dealing Matt Duffy. I get that; I know that he did, but it comes with the territory. I sat on the edge of my mom and dad's bed the night my dad traded Jack Clark for David Green and Jose Uribe and that yep. left-handed pitcher that couldn't throw the double nickel. You know, and he asked me a question. He said. Should I trade Jack? And I said, if you do, I won't talk to you for two weeks. I think that it lasted about a month before I talked yeah. to my dad. But he had to do what he had to do. And it was unfortunate because David Green was a great talent who had a significant drug and alcohol issue, and he would go AWOL, and he wasn't a dependable ball player or teammate. So, you know, hey, that's the way it goes. You roll the dice. And Absolutely. I think Bobby Evans is doing a fine job. I really do. 
I think Bobby Evans, he's a champion. He's won three world championships with this club in a lesser capacity. And now he gets the opportunity to be the guy to pull the, pull the final string. And I can't be much any more supportive for Bobby Evans than doing saying that. Um, you know, um, getting Jose Uribe makes that trade a little bit less skewed. Yeah, when you they won two divisions with him at shortstop. Yeah, and cool. I think the other guy was Dave LaPointe. I think they got Dave LaPointe out of that, and he he handled Dave LaPointe. That was the left hander. You're right, Dave yeah. LaPointe. You're right. So, you know, but Jack Clark is Jack Clark. And, and, and to me, Jack Clark, when I grew up and still probably to this day, uh, was for me my, my Willie Mays. You know, he was my Willie McCovey too. Jack Clark was to me, uh, an incredible athlete, great baseball player. Um, and, you know, he, he hit what, almost 500 home runs and, Played on a championship club in St. Louis, and he bounced around a little bit. I remember bit. that. Don't bring that up. But um, it was a very era. clutch, clutch hitter. Yeah, I was on the wrong the end of the top in that year in '87. Yeah. So you know that broke my heart, and that was my dad making the deal. I hated my dad for a good thirty days, but you know I ended up having to love him again. Uh, you know what? That's just the way the nature of this game is. Emotionally, um, I looked at the deal more emotionally than I did. For the, the the actual deal itself, I I love Matt Duffy, and I love Matt Duffy even more because he wore number five. So that kind of just <laughs> threw me for a whack as well. There you go. But it is what it is. Bobby Evans yeah. is doing a fine job. I I don't have any room to critic critique him. I mean I can and I will, but it's really Everybody coming does. from Everybody nowhere. Does. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Bobby Evans is doing a right. fine job, and I and I'm right, glad. Yeah, I hate to jump off here. here. I got I got a roll over here. I, my my fox party here is uh, going on here. We're going out. But, All right, uh, we'll do your uh, thing. Thank you, thank you for dropping by. Hey Tim, 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 Tim. Hey, tomorrow when I fly back, I want I want to call you tomorrow. I want to call you tomorrow. I want to talk to you about something tomorrow. Give me a call. I will. I'll, I'll look forward oh, to it. Tim? Take care, buddy. I appreciate thank it. You, Take care. Have a good Have a good night. All right, Vasu. Be well. Bye. Thank you, Vasu. See you soon. All right. That's true. What a great guest, Ralph. He is a Absolutely. very articulate, are, um, very well-informed, um, passionate guy, and I like having him on our show. I really beautiful. do. This is fun, Timmy. Um, I enjoy it every week, and it's a big part of my life. So thank you for being my friend, and thank you for being my partner on this. I appreciate it, and thank you as well. I, I, I'm grateful, and it's a blessing to be able to do this with you. Thank you. And uh, all right. to all of you out there, I'm just going to tell you to keep on keeping on. That's the best you can do for yourself and for your family. Adios, everybody. Love you guys. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye.